Right. Well, are we ready? Tuko tayari. For the next session. Kwa kipindi kingine. Ministry gifts, spiritual gifts. Uduma za kiroho na karama za rohoni. Father, we thank you in Jesus name. Baba tukushuka kwa jina la Yesu. Again for this opportunity. Asante tena kwa nafasi hii to come together. Kuja pamoja in this bible school katika iki chocha biblia and learn your word na kujifunza neno lako thank you for your holy spirit asante kwa roho mtakatifu the teacher mwalimu the one that leads and guides us into all truth ambaye anatuongoza katika kweli yote in jesus name katika jina la yesu we pray and we believe tunaomba na kuamini amen amen hallelujah hallelujah so let's continue sasa tuendelee It says which the Holy Ghost teaches verse 13 um, comparing spiritual things with spiritual or combining and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. If you're walking only by your senses, or not born again, some of the things that that uh, we Christians do they seem foolish mambo ambayo sisi wa kristo tunafanya wakati mwingine yanaonekana ya kijinga you ever think about that umewe kufikiria kuhusu hilo jesus born of a virgin kwamba yesu amezaliwa na bikira the very foundation of our christianity is a belief in that na msingi wa imani yetu ya kikristo ni kuamini kuzaliwa yesu kwa bikira kwa bikira maria that sounds really foolish hiyo inaonekana kama ni kitu ambacho ni cha kijinga to lift our hands like this to a god that we can't see kunyanya mikono yako na mnabii kwa mungu usemuona to get down on our knees kupiga magoti chini and worship him na kumabudu to pray in a language that our mind doesn't understand kuomba kwa lugha ambayo akilizetu haielewi to lay hands and people get healed to understand we walk by faith and not by sight tunatembea kwa imani na sio kwa kuona we say that we hear from god what what tuko hapa tumsikia mungu yuko wapi yuko wapi Our, the, the presence of God fills our, the place where we gather na uwepo wa Mungu unajaza mahali ambapo tumekusanyika and we can sense his presence his glory tunaweza tukahisi uwepo wake na utukufu wake understand there's a lot of things kuna mambo mengi yanaonekana ya kijinga to the natural mind that look foolish to the world katika mambo ya asili au watu wa asili yanaonekana ni upumbavu but our god is alive na kimungu wetu you have and we know it na tunajua hivyo that's why jesus in mark 4 ndio maana yesu katika marko 4 He talked about only those that are converted would be would understand the mystery. We have a different life, we have a different language, we have a different flow. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Kwa jinsi ya rohoni. But he that is spiritual you want to walk by the spirit. Lakini yule ambaye yuko kiroho unataka utembee kiroho. With illumination to your mind and out through your body. Na ukitiwa nuru katika roho yako na katika mwili wako. You know you can live a natural life but and at the same time you're checking on the inside. Unaweza ukaishi katika maisha ya kawaida lakini uko unaangalia katika mambo ya kiroho. Now that doesn't mean you walk around I'm spiritual. Ooh, I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual. Ooh. So natembea kama robot. Ooh, mimi ni mtu wa kiroho. Like Martin was a few years ago. Kama Martin alikuwa wa kiroho. Kama alikuwa Martin. Anatetemeka tu. In fact, much of the Holy Spirit's leading is by inward witness. Na kwa kia 
kuishi katika roho ni katika ile ushahidi wa ndani you have that green light inside you and it stays there kuna ile taa ya kijani iko ndani mwako na inakaa pale but if you get uh uh-uh on the inside and that stays there you better stop ukisikia aa ndani mwako acha or it could be wait a little bit it's not the time yet au unaweza kuambia subiri kidogo bado muda hujafika you understand unaelewa that's the primary way because the bible says his spirit bears witness with our spirit in romans 8 paul said it seemed good to me and the holy ghost if visions come praise god but you don't go seeking them Just because you had a dream doesn't mean every dream you had God was trying to speak to you. We all dream. But when you get a dream from God, when you wake up, you will know this was something that came from God. That's part of in the realm of discerning of spirits where you see into the spirit realm. And I've had that before. I would not have this leg. Come again. I would not have this leg if I had not obeyed a dream that God gave me one night. When I was going to Bible school, I I was a welder. And there was this big piece of metal. We used to weld these big metal things. And I had a dream that uh, one of the workers that I was working with was moving it across the room on this big chain. And I had a dream that the thing fell off on the floor. And this was a massive piece of steel. The next day when I went to work, sure enough I was in the same condition that I saw in the dream. And I was actually helping the person to move the piece of metal across the room. And my leg was underneath. And all of a sudden I I aha and I moved away and right after I moved away bam it Na, fell on the floor oh thank you Jesus thank you Jesus for the Holy Ghost you understand God he will lead us the Holy Spirit will show us a few years ago when when we were doing a crusade in Mombasa and it was um I was coming here it was the time that we did the crusade out here on the grounds and then after we got done here we went to Mombasa and before I left we'd been praying and I always check before I leave and I told my wife I said Tanzania is going to be okay but there's something about Mombasa. Tanzania itakuwa sawa lakini kuna kitu kiko sawa kule Mombasa. And she picked up the same thing in the church back home that was praying they picked up the same thing. Na yeye akapata hisia hiyo hiyo na kanisa kule walipokuwa naomba kule Ujerumani na wenyewe akapata kitazari hiyo hiyo. But inside lakini ndani and I kept praying about it when that came up. Nikaendea kuomba ilipojitokeza hiyo. But then I had the release go ahead and do it. Lakini ikapata It's going to be okay. So when we did the crusade in Mombasa, the I think it was the first or second night. There was a man that came and he was standing in the middle and he kind of stood out. 
kulikuwa kuna mtu alikuja akakaa katika mkutano katikati afu akasimama and then of course we went forward people got saved that night healing miracles thank god tukaendelea mbele watu wakaponywa watu wakaokoka asante yesu and from that night on everything was okay na kwanza hiyo siku mambo yalikuwa yako sawa but i noticed the next night lakini kagundua kitu siku iliyofuata there were people standing there with guns kulikuwa kuna watu wamesimama pale na bunduki and you had to go through that to get onto the crusade grounds na itakuwa upite katikati yao uende kwenye viwanja vya mkutano you know what unajua nini when we got done tulipomaliza bishop joseph told me mchungaji joseph akaniambia they caught two terrorists kwamba wameshika materialist nani people that were going to eh magaidi wawili you understand unaelewa they caught him Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. You Asante. know why they caught him because of prayer. Asante Mungu kwa Roho Mtakatifu. Waliwakamata kwa sababu tuliomba. I'm going to finish my course. I'm not going out early. Lazima nimalize mwito wangu. Sitaenda mbinguni mapema hata mimi siendi mbinguni mapema. I accept my deliverance. Napokea ukopozi wangu. You know the Bible says some don't ex- didn't in the book in Hebrews 11 some didn't receive their deliverance but if some didn't receive praise God I'm receiving mine kusikiza vizuri kwa kitabu cha cha kile cha cha Hebrewia 11 kuna watu wengine walipokea ukombozi wao na wengine hawajapokea ukombozi wao kama kuna waliopokea ukombozi wao mimi jioni na mimi nipo nitapokea wa kwangu amen amen you know i think about your architect na 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 nafikiri kuhusu yule ambaye amesimamia jengo. The when I was here two or three times when when you were building the building. Nilipokuwa hapa mara tatu au mara mbili poko majenga kanisa lenu. And Bishop Charles came to pick me up to take me to the airport. Askofu Charles akaja kanichukua kunipeleka airport. And he said you got to hear what happened today. Unatakiwa ujue kile kilichotokea hapa leo. That's when you fell off of the top that building. Ndio alianguka fundi alianguka kutoka kwenye jengo kule juu. You're a miracle. Wewe ni muujiza. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't fall off of a building that tall and come out okay. Alianguka kutoka kwenye pala na katoka salama. But you understand he needs to be around for a while. Anatakiwa aendelee kuwepo kwa muda hapa. And he's faithful here. Na ni mwaminifu hapa. And he gave his life to do the work of God and trust God and that's why he's alive today. Na ametoa maisha yake kumtumikia Mungu na ndio maana yuko hai leo. And I guarantee you somewhere in all of this it got picked up in the spirit and prayed out and that's why you're alive today. Na naamini kwamba kuna mtu alipata katika ulimwengu wa roho akaomba ndio maana uko hai. So everybody say thank God for the Holy Ghost. Kila mmoja aseme asante Mungu kwa ajili ya Roho Mtakatifu. Amen. Amen. Well I didn't mean to get into all of that but it's important. Because that's where these gifts come in. Na ndio mahali ambapo hizi roho anapokuja. Hallelujah. That's part of these nine gifts that I'm talking about. Hii ni sehemu ya hizo karama tisa ambazo tunazozungumzia. So it says Kwa hiyo inasema But he that is spiritual judgeth all things yet he himself is judged of no man. Lakini tuwa rooni anapima mambo yote lakini yeye atambulikani na mtu mwingine You know you walk in the spirit you're going to fulfill the law Wewe unapotembea katika roho hautakiwi kutimiza sheria I'm talking about the God law Wewe unapotembea katika roho unatimiza sheria na zungumzia sheria ya Mungu And when you're walking by God's laws there's protection Unapotembea katika sheria za Mungu kuna ulinzi For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him but hallelujah we have the mind of Christ Ni nani aliyejua fahamu za Bwana ili apate kumelimisha lakini sisi tunayo nia ya Kristo The mind of Christ Christ is the word of God. Nia ya Kristo ni neno la Mungu. The Holy Spirit helping you. Roho Mtakatifu anakusaidia. Revealing the plan of God for your life. Anafunua mpango wa Mungu kwa maisha yako. And revealing the truths of God's word. Anafunua kweli ya Mungu. And your mind renewed to those truths. Na na kilizako zinaweka upya kwa ajili ya hizo 
kweli. Your mind walking in line with what's in your spirit. And not just you thinking, but God's thinking his thoughts through you. You so, and him working together. So with the Holy Spirit as your helper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's go to Romans. The eighth chapter. Are you learning something tonight? Go to Romans, the eighth chapter. It's right before Corinthians. And let's go to a very familiar passage of Scripture. Well, you know, brother, all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. All things. So whatever happens, that's the will of God for your life. That is not what this Bible verse is saying. There's also a devil out there that wants to stop you. And those things are not trying to work good in your life. Sickness is not trying to work good in your life. But God has a way to turn everything around for good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, look at this. Angalia sasa. Go to verse, um, for the sake of time, go to verse 26. The whole point of this, uh, you're born again, your spirit is perfect. And that's what you have in verse 23. You still have a body that is aging. Your body is not perfect. But there's going to be a day that your body will be perfected. All your wrinkles are going to be gone. Any imperfection going to be gone. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So... When we're in this world, where we have a physical body that contacts the physical realm, but we have spirit that is, the con- that is in contact with the spirit realm. Now, because of the limitations that our body has, we need help. Tell your neighbor, you need help. Because of the limits of our mind, with our education, we need help. You will not be able to fulfill your purpose by just going to a university. It has to go deeper than that. And remember, we have the Holy Spirit. And he's searching. He's helping you to find. He helps you to find. If you will work with him, he will help you to... It says, Likewise, the Spirit itself helpeth our infirmities. What are our infirmities? The fact that we're here in a body that is limited to the physical realm. It wasn't that way in the beginning for Adam. 
But we have a helper. The Holy Spirit will help us. He help us our infirmities. Here it is again. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. So because of the limits of your education and your physical body and even the amount of revelation that you have na, you don't have it all but guess what the helper he knows it all oh hallelujah oh hallelujah he knows everything about everything he's in you hallelujah hallelujah He's in you. And he's there to help you. To get you the information that you need. And so he's in, in, in your prayer life. If all you do is pray with your understanding, you will be limited. According to the revelation of God's word that you have. Because when you pray with your understanding, you've got to pray according to the will of God for those things to come to pass. But think about it. When the Holy Spirit prays through you with other tongues, he's bypassing your brain. And right out of your spirit is coming perfect prayer over the situations. And perfect prayer about the purpose God has for your life. I'm going to show you that as we go into the next verse. The Greek says this. That the Holy Spirit takes hold together you know it would be one thing if this pulpit needed to be moved from here to the floor I could grab it like this I could do it and I'm sure if I didn't have this microphone I probably could set it down there and I know some of you women could because you women are strong I see how you carry those water buckets on the top of your head I'm trying to figure out how you do that but think about it if he grabbed onto this side and I grabbed onto this side, it would be much easier. And that's what it means. He's your helper. And he is there to help you find the will of God. He's there to help you in your prayer life. He's there to help you in everything you do. The person of the Godhead lives in you by the Holy Spirit. God doesn't call us to do the possible. He calls us to do the impossible. Mungu. And it takes the Holy Ghost working through us to get it done. Mungu oh, somebody say something. Hallelujah. So in the Greek it says the Holy Spirit takes hold together with us with groanings which cannot be uttered in a known language. Wow. Wow. What language is it? When you speak in tongues, that's not a language you have learned. That is the Holy Spirit praying through you 
in his language. Now other people might know that language but you won't know it. And when you pray with other tongues you're praying the perfect will of God over the situations you're praying about. Okay Lord, what's my calling? What's my purpose? It's important. What is it? You have Holy Spirit to help you. Now, continue on here. Oh, look at this. This is so good. Verse 27. And he that searched Remember what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 2? He searches the deep things. He that searcheth the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He that searcheth the hearts. That heart there is talking about what is inside of you. He's looking to reveal it to you. Knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. The word spirit there is not a reference to the whole to the to the Holy Spirit, it is a reference to your human spirit. The Holy Spirit, He's the one that's doing the searching. He's the one that's helping you to find. Remember, Jesus said, Seek and you'll find, seek and you'll find. Hallelujah. So He's there working with you, searching. He's looking. The Bible says in Romans 8, 16, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, they are the mature sons of God. Hallelujah. For we walk by faith and not by sight. That's talking about walking in the Spirit. Spirit. When we walk in the Spirit, we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Hallelujah. You have a helper. Look at your neighbor and say, You have a helper. That's the Holy Spirit. He's your helper. That's why John said in 1 John 4 4, Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. So look at this. It says he knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. That's the place in your human spirit where all this information is about your calling to be revealed. Because he maketh intercession for the Many pe- people have looked at this for unbelievers. Come again. Many people have looked at this verse only t- to pray for the lost. This is not just about praying for the lost. It says he maketh intercession for the saints. Look at your neighbor and say, hello, saint. You know who saints are? The separated ones unto God for a purpose. Hallelujah. Separated unto God with a call. Hallelujah. Woo. Then look at the next verse. And we know that all things all what things? Mamboyote. The things that he's talking about here. You got to walk in God's plan for your life for everything to work together for your good. You understand. If I had not 
obeyed that dream that I had, and if I had not obeyed what God showed me, I might have been killed on that day. Kama sijati ile ndoto ambayo Mungu alionyesha I've had times where God told me not to go to nations. I don't just run and say, okay, 21 nations, hallelujah, where's the next one? No, we pray. So tunasema haleluya nchi 21 lazima niombe kabla ya kwenda kwenye nchi yoyote. I've had the Lord tell me not to go to nations before. Na kuna wakati Mungu ameniambia nisiende kwenye mataifa hapo kwanza. I've had the Lord tell me get out of this hotel tonight. You go to another one tomorrow. Kuna wakati Mungu ananiambia utoke kwenye hoteli hapa nenda kwenye hoteli nyingine kesho. You understand and if my leg had been cut off well you know that was the Lord's plan for your life so that you could spend the rest of your life like this no I didn't obey what God showed me you understand this, this will save your life brother so all things work together for them that love God and hallelujah look at this and are called look at your neighbor and say you're called you're called you're called you're called according to his purpose you want to be doing what he called you to do that's what pleases God that's the flow of God for your life hallelujah you want to you want to you want to walk in what his purpose Purposes. And the Holy Spirit will help you to, to fulfill that purpose. Amen. Amen. Isn't that great that we have a helper? Hallelujah. 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 Now, Sasa. in this process of preparation, I said it last night that even if you're called to fivefold ministry, there's two things. Number one, the center of what God does in the earth today comes out of the local church. There is no ministry gift that should not have a home base. Everybody needs a local church. Everyone. And Paul even writes that in Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 3.16, he says that we are his temple individually and collectively. You understand, you need a home base. The church of Jerusalem was a home base. Paul went out and started many churches. They were home bases. Even the apostle Paul, his home base was the church of Antioch. That's number one. Secondly, even if you're called to the fivefold ministry, you should have spent some time in the ministry of helps. Lazima utumie muda wako kufanya uduma ya masaidiano. And I showed you that last night, but I have one other thing on that I want to show you. Nilikuonesha jana yakiki kuna baadhi ya mambo hata nikuonesha tena. Go to Acts 6. Nenda kwa kitabu cha Mathayo mitume 6. And let's look at this verse that Martin taught us the other night. Tuangalie kaka mstari ambao Martin alitufundisha siku zilizopita. In Acts 6. Ah, Mathayo mitume 6. This was a ministry of helps. Hii ilikuwa ni huduma ya msaidiano. And the apostles na mitume 
And let me say this about the apostle. There are three categories of apostles. Number one, Jesus. Yes. Jesus was an apostle. Yes, He stood in all five ministry offices. Jesus. Yes. Secondly, there is, and this is found in the book of Revelations. There is what is called the apostles of the Lamb. And they were the ones that were responsible to give us the revelation for the New Testament. Paul is also included in that. And then, we have modern day apostles. We are not writing new scriptures. We go back to what's already been written. You understand? That's the difference. Apostles pioneer, they start churches, they start works for God, they're missionaries. All right. Sawa. Um, I want you to look at this. It says in verse 1, and in those days when the number of disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. Because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Now, look at verse 2. So what happened is these widows needed to be fed because, uh, because um, some of them, well, all of them, had lost their husbands. They, this, the, all of these were Jews. But the Greek-speaking Jews were those that had not grown up with the teaching of the Old Testament. And so you had two categories of Jews here. You had Jews that grew up with the Old Testament law. And then you had Jews that were Jews by birth, but they weren't Jews by faith. Following the Old Testament, you understand? If you were following the Old Testament and dedicated in that way, it was part of your culture to go to Jerusalem when you were older so that when you died, you died in that city. And so what happened during this time is many of the men were dying before their wives. And under the law, they were taken care of. You understand there weren't those social government programs. But they were taken care of by the people of the Old Testament. That were devout to the Old Testament. But if you were a Greek speaking Jew, you didn't understand that. And so now you got these wives that are born again, they're in the church and they don't know what to do. Because under the Old Testament following the law you were taken care of. And so we have a need here that the church needs to meet. So there was a conflict between these two. Continue. It says then the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. 
Wakaleta neshara wakaita jamii ya wanafunzi wakasema haipendezi si kuliacha neno la Mungu na kuhudumia mezani. Now understand this is not a little church. Hii haikuwa kanisa dogo. This is a church that started with 3000. Hii ni kanisa ilianza na watu 3000. Then there was another miracle the man that was lame walked 5000. Na kukatokea muujiza ule kiweta anatembea wakaokoka wanaume 5000. And the Bible says the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So there's a this is a big church. And so someone needed to take care of this situation not the apostles that were responsible to pray and and study the word and give out the meat. Of the word. Now look at this. So in your ministry there needs to be different leaders katika huduma yako lazima kuepo na viongozi tofauti tofauti even with moses in the old testament hata musa wakati wa gano la kale when he was the only one judging these 3 million israelites alipokuwa ni yeye ndio kiongozi kwa hukumu wa israeli milioni 3 and then his father in law came to him na baba mke wake akaja and said you keep doing this you're going to wear out uwezi kufanya hivi utaenda kufa and and a plan was given to him na akapewa mpango mkakati and the plan was a godly plan na mpango ulikuwa ni mpango wa kimungu because it's recorded in the scriptures kwa sababu imeandikwa katika maandiko and he appointed a leader over a thousand and then the leaders over a hundred and down the leaders over 10 kwa akaweka viongozi ambao wanasimamia maelfu wengine wanasimamia 100 wengine wanasimamia 50 na wengine wanasimamia 10 you understand you develop a children's ministry you're going to have a leader of the children kwa unatakuwa unapokuwa na huduma ya watoto and then there's going to be under other workers that work with that leader. Na kutakuwa na viongozi ambao wanafanya kazi chini ya kiongozi wa watoto. A praise and worship leader, a sound leader, whatever it is, you're going to have leaders and you're going to delegate. Kwa unatakuwa una viongozi kwenye sifa na kuabudu viongozi kwenye kila idara na unatakuwa uogae majukumu. In our church back in Germany, katika kanisa letu kule Germany, we have a cleaning leader tuna mtu anayesimamia usafi and then we have groups lakini pia tuna vikundi nobody gets on this platform unless they're willing to clean hakuna mtu anaruhusiwa kuingia kwenye hii madhabahu mpaka awe tayari kufanya usafi no one hakuna mtu nobody gets on this platform hakuna yote anaruhusiwa kupanda kwenye hii in praise and worship preaching teaching whatever nobody gets on this platform unless they're willing to clean kwa hiyo uwe ni muhubiri kiongozi wa sifa mzee wa kanisa muhubiri au ruhusi kupanda madhabahu mpaka uwe tayari kufanya usafi pale madhabahu even martin was cleaning at one time hata martin na yeye alikuwa anafanya usafi wakati mmoja even i've had my hands up toilets hata mimi mwenyewe nimekuwa nikifanya usafi chooni hallelujah hallelujah i don't have time to do all that now you understand sasa hivi sasa muda kufanya hayo yote unaelewa but i've done it all in the past i've run sound i've swept i've cleaned I've done all everything that people do in the church I've done. Nimefanya hayo huko nyuma, nimeosha choo, nimefunga vyombo, nimefagia kanisa, nimefanya vitu vyote ambavyo watu wanataka kufanya sasa hivi. And they know it. Na wanajua. And I believe in 100% involvement in the church. Na asimia 100 najitolea kufanya kazi kanisani. Everybody should be involved in some area in the church. Kila mmoja atakuwa afanye kitu kwenye kanisa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're we're the body and the body needs to function. Sisi ni mwili na mwili tutakao fanye kazi. Every bar, part of your body is meant to function. Kila kiungo katika mwili wako umekusudiwa kufanya kitu. Not to come and just sit. Sio uje ukae tu. Every single part of the local church body is meant to function. Kila kiungo katika mwili wa Kristo katika kanisa mali pamoja imekusudiwa kufanya kitu. And you know what the word says? Najua neno linasema As we're faithful over little he makes us great over much. Hallelujah. Kwa maumivu kwa madogo Mungu atakufanya uwe maumivu kwa makubwa. Hallelujah. All right, now look at this. Angalia hili. Okay. Okay. So it says and it gives you the qualifications. Inakupatia sifa pale. But I want you to notice it says to appoint over. So these are the leaders. Kwa hiyo kama wakawachagua kuwa juu. Kwa hiyo hawa ni viongozi. You want mature people in your leadership. Unahitaji watu waliokomaa kiroho katika uongozi wa kanisa. You understand? Unaelewa? Your leadership must have people of these qualifications. Na una una viongozi wa kanisa ni kwako watakuwa wao na sifa hizi hapa. Born again, wamekoka, filled with the Holy Ghost, wamecheza roho mtakatifu, 
full of wisdom these are people for your leadership in your ministry of helps verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually to what? to prayer why? because they've got to find the flow of God for that whole ministry and to the ministry of the word now it pleased the crowd it says and the saying pleased the whole multitude and, and now look at this and they chose Stephen a man of full of faith and of the Holy Ghost and Philip everybody say Philip everybody say Philip everybody say Philip everybody say Philip who's, who's mentioned here Philip everybody say Philip 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 who is this? There were seven here, and one of them had the name Philip. Philip is going to serve widow women. Come again. Philip is going to be a part of the food program, the feeding program. Philip is going to take food to widow women. He's going to serve rice and goat and chapati or whatever kind of bread that is. And arrow root. <laughs> Who did I say? Philip, right? Philip, and Dio. Go to Acts. 21 and we're going to close with this have you learned something tonight Acts 21 go all the way over there the apostle Yeho. the prophet Yeho. Yeho. the pastor Yeho. Yeho. the teacher Yeho. and the evangelist Yahoo! These are the ministry gifts. But look. Acts 21. And read. Uh, Acts 21. We that were of which verse? Acts 21, verse 8. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed. That was his ministry of helps with him. And came unto Caesarea. And we entered into the house of who? Who? Whose house? Philip. Filippo. Philip what? Filippo Nani. The fiery preacher. The evangelist. The ministry gift of the evangelist. But where did he start? He was serving widows. That's where he got started. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Father, thank you for your word tonight. And thank you for your Holy Spirit that helps us. In Jesus' name. To find those purposes for our life. Amen. Amen. So your assignment. You get busy in your church doing something. And if you're not, you don't graduate Bible school. And you need to write down on paper what's in your heart for the vision. And then you keep that in private. I want you to start 
thinking that way. Uanze kufikiria hivyo. Seeking, praying that way. Uanze kuomba na na kufikiria hivyo. And then we'll see what God wants to do. Tutaona pia Mungu atataka kufanya. What God does with your life. Mungu atafanya maisha yako. It'll be wonderful. Itakuwa nzuri. Amen, Bishop. Amen.